You know what they always say, half a Telecaster is better than none. Today we're continuing our build. Yes, indeed, we have half a guitar put together and today's video is going to be focusing on the electronics and I'm going to show you exactly how to wire up a Telecaster. Not extremely difficult, guys, but I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process that I like to use to get that done. So we're going to be wiring it up with a standard volume tone control pot 250K. We're going to be putting in a cache uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's a brand new three-way switch from a company called Cache, I believe it's pronounced that way. Other than that, the only other special thing about this circuit is that it does have a treble bleed. So I'm going to show you how to go about wiring that up. And uh, the heart and soul of this guitar build will be a set of pickups from the good people over at Mr. Glenn's Pickups over in New Zealand. They shipped me a really nice set of pickups for this Telecaster called the Cruel Mistress. A little bit of a hotter set, which I like. A little bit more output in the bridge. I'll Nico uh, five magnets for those pickups, which I love. I feel like those are always really good sounding uh, magnets to have in pickups. And I like my Telecasters to have a little bit more bite, but uh, not to be harsh in any way. So hopefully, as soon as this guitar build is done, I'll be able to do a full demo for you guys on those pickups specifically. I'm looking forward to doing all that. Now, to accelerate things, I skipped over some of the parts uh, in terms of the assembly. So I've gone over all of that in a previous video that I posted not too long ago where I show how to install the bridge, how to line up the neck, how to drill the holes, etc, etc. There's no point in me going over all that stuff again here today. So I kind of skipped over that portion just to accelerate things. If you're interested in checking out all of that video uh, content, please feel free to do so. I have over 600 videos right now in my video archive that cover all aspects of guitar building. So please feel free to take a look at some of those. But we're gonna jump into the process of wiring up this guitar. There's a lot of steps involved and I'm gonna take my time to do it. So I'm gonna jump right in so that we don't make this video extra long. Let's get right to it and go over to my messy workbench. We're at the stage of the guitar build where we're going to have to tackle the wiring. Wiring is not necessarily that difficult, but there is certain things you got to take into consideration. So today I'm going to be showing you how we wire up this Telecaster. I've already installed the pick guard with the neck pickup, uh, the bridge with the bridge pickup, and the wires, you can see them coming through here. The longer wire is going to be the bridge. The shorter wire is the neck. And we're going to be working with that. As you can see, I also uh, have completely lined the inside of the, uh, you know, the, the little wiring cavity here with some shielding tape. Uh, I like to do that. And I like to continue that with some shielding underneath the cover to create sort of a Faraday cage so that when everything's put in place, everything's shielded as it should be. We're going to be using some very typical 250k pots for this uh, build. And uh, I'm going to show you how I go about wiring those up in a minute. Just a, a few more little words about these pickups. These pickups are pickups from a uh, good friend of mine all the way in New Zealand, Mr. Glynn. Mr. Glynn's pickups are awesome and we're going to be putting them into this build. These pickups are their Cruel Mistress set. And that set is a little bit hotter than a normal Telecaster pickup would normally be. It's 10.65 in the bridge, more or less. Uh, in the neck, it's about 7.25. And basically, this pickup set should give me a little bit more than the standard country twang. A little bit more of a fuller bottom end, uh, mids that cut through better, and a nice strong top. Uh, end to the sound, but not necessarily making them harsh. El Nico 5 magnets, you can see the magnets on the bridge here are really nicely rounded, uh, you know, chamfered uh, magnets and 43 gauge wire. So I can't wait to get this wired up. 
so that I can actually finish the build and play this darn thing. So let's get started. Now, one thing that I'm doing a little different on this build here is I'm actually using a new type of switch for the three-way. Usually I go with a standard three-way switch that is basically a fender type switch. This one is actually a little bit different. It's actually made from a company called Cash. I'm not familiar with them. Um, I wanted to take a chance and see what they're all about. They, it seems well made, seems nice and stiff when you switch between the three positions. It has a nice, looks like a solid looking cover here. The en ends where we will uh, solder up the wires are all at the bottom. Very similar to like these cheaper looking overseas switches, you know, like this same kind of design, but made much better uh, in my opinion. Like these are the cheaper ones, very flimsy feeling switches here. Uh, this one doesn't feel like that. It's heavier, feels more solid. I'm giving it, giving it a shot. I'm gonna see what it ends up, you know, how well it ends up working. If it works well, I might use it on other builds. If not, I'll just take it out and put a standard three-way Telecaster switch on it. But I'm giving it, um, I'm gonna kick the tires, so to speak. So that's what we're gonna be using for the switch. The other thing that we're gonna to add to the circuit is a, uh, a little resistor that's gonna be going in the circuit. And we're also gonna be putting in this, which is a, a little uh, series of uh, resistors that are uh, put together. That's gonna be our treble bleed that we're gonna be doing on this as well. So let's get started. Let's start wiring everything up and see if we can get through the process in one piece. So the first thing I like to do is I like to make sure that everything is tinned. So I'm gonna go ahead, heat up the soldering iron and I'm gonna start tinning all of the ends here so that we can make the connections and then start working on uh, the actual pots. I like to put my pots facing each other so that uh, you know uh, we don't have any issues when we put it into, we try to stuff everything back into the cavity here. Um, should be plenty of room to work you know, more or less. Um, so let's put the switch on this thing here. And uh, we'll also put in this guy, which is gonna be the uh, output jack. I'm thinking about possibly changing this. I have another version of this output jack cover, if you wanna call it that, that is not chrome. This one's chrome. I have another one that is made of nickel. I kinda like the nickel better. I might actually just install the nickel on here first, but um, we don't have to worry about that too much at this point. So let's get started. Now I know it looks a little scary. It looks like we're performing surgery here, but I like to cover the body with uh, anything that I can use to protect it from any kind of uh, hot solder falling on the guitar when I do this, uh, just to make sure that everything is uh, protected. These um, wires look like they're already tinned, but I'm just going to tin them once again, just to make absolutely sure that uh, we won't have any issues uh, down the line. When you're tinning your wires, it just takes a, a you know, it doesn't take very long. You just have to lightly touch your soldering iron and make sure that the wire is coated nicely and then you're in business. It doesn't take much more than a few seconds to do this, but it makes your life a lot easier when you're actually in the middle of um, getting things wired up. If you have um, a little bit of messy solder like I do here, a little bit thick, uh, I like to take that out. just to uh, keep things neat. Clean the tip of your soldering iron frequently so that it doesn't make a mess. There we go. And same here, we'll do the same thing. Okay, that should do it. 
Now, according to the wiring diagram from the makers of the switch, the bridge should actually be soldered to the first two lugs here on the uh, switch. So I'm gonna tin that as well. And then we're gonna just attach the wire to both of those lugs. Like so. This is going to the ground, which is going to, it's going to be the back of the, the first pot here. So what I like to do is I like to put down a little bit of uh, solder there. So that we can tack it down very quickly like that you don't want to keep anything hot on the pot for too long that's not going to be good so as as uh, quickly as possible is the best way of doing it so now we're going to take this and connect it to the series of lugs that it belongs to which are the two outermost ones which are here so we're going to tin those as well Keep the tip of your uh, soldering iron clean. As you can see, this one's already getting a little bit dirty. So I'm just gonna shine it up. You want it to be shiny like that as much as possible. Okay, so now we are gonna attach the neck pickup here. We're gonna attach it to the proper lugs. If you feel like you're not getting a good connection, add a little bit more solder. That should be good. And then we're gonna take this guy and we're also gonna put it on the back right there as part of the ground. Sometimes you need an extra pair of hands. <laughs> One of the lugs is going to be attached to the back of the pot. Sometimes you could bend the lugs to reach the back of the pot and just solder it that way. In this case, it's a little bit too long. So what I like to do is I like to use a little wire uh, to be able to span that distance. You can use any leftover wire you have, just cut a little piece off and tack it down there and there, which should do the trick. Now, because all of this wire is plastic, I'm not gonna use uh, the pushback cloth type. I'm actually just gonna use the plastic type here. Now, because these things do get hot, uh, I'm just going to try and work as quickly as I can. And that's all it takes to do that. At this stage in the process, I like to put the little resistor that we have uh, lined up for the tone pot. And uh, that usually goes on this end right here and attaches to the back of the pot. So I'm gonna use this little guy, bend the legs and get it ready to go right there. Let's put a little dab of solder at the back of this pot here. And what we'll do, is I already slid in the little resistor and we're just gonna tack it down right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the lug. And 
And once that's done, I'll just clip it off. Next in the step, we're gonna need to pull a wire from the center position here, uh, all the way over to the end lug there. And as you can see, I've already placed the little bleed circuit there between the first two lugs. So what I'm gonna do is I'll solder the wire there, pass it through the lug, and then solder both of the uh, the wire and the lug uh, and the leg of the resistor here at the same time so as not to overheat anything. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of solder on this two center positions here. I've already prepared my length of wire, so I'm gonna put that down there. And I like to just pull it a little bit just to make sure it's, you know, well attached and it won't come loose. And then I'll put the wire in here. Now, this is a lot of wire. I actually might make it a little bit shorter. Maybe just cut it down up to here. So, cause it's really, it's really has to, it really just has to go here like that, right? So I could leave it long like this, but it could get in the way, so I prefer just to cut that down a little bit. So I've shortened the wire just a little bit, passed it through the lug, and I'm just gonna tack that down here. Uh, I was afraid that was gonna happen. It's okay, we're just gonna stick that back in, tack it down. There we go. I'll clean up the, the lengths that are a little bit longer there at, at the end of the, the process to make everything nice and neat. So we have that one down. Now what we need to do is we need to pass another wire from the same lug to the center lug here. So while I have my wire um, solder warmed up here, I'll just put a tin that up a little bit cut a little bit of a wire so I can go from there to there and we should be in business. Here's the tricky part. We're going to have to get the other end of that wire um, also in here with the rest of the wires that we just pushed in there. So let's see if we can get that in. Hopefully we can. Usually it's a lot easier when there's no uh, lead circuit in there but what we're gonna try and do it actually I what I might actually do is I'll wrap these two wires together and then slide it in there sometimes it feels like you're doing surgery Now we'll make all this wiring nice and neat at the end. We still have to put the output jack right along this lug here. So after double checking the wiring, uh, I saw that the uh, information that was on the Amazon link for this switch was actually incorrect because it was telling me to wire the, uh, the pickup wires to the first two lugs. In fact, it was the second two lugs and the, the instead of being the last two, it was the next to last two lugs here. So I wasn't getting any sound. 
I went to another website and they had the correct information. So I followed those guidelines and lo and behold, everything now works. So I like to check my work once I wire everything up. And the way I usually do that is I actually physically plug in the wire going to the output jack here and go through the process of turning up the volume, turning up the tone and switching through the different pickup positions while tapping. So in this case, we should hear the neck pickup nice and clear. If I put it in the middle position here, we should hear the neck and the bridge. And if we put it in the last position, we should hear only the bridge. And of course, check to see that the volume goes off when it's supposed to, and that you can hear a different in difference in the um, the tone as well. If uh, something is touching, you might lose connection. So be careful when you're doing that. And seems to be working. So now that we have it wired up properly, we can uh, install the jack cover plate here and uh, screw everything down. And then the last thing that we would need to do is install the neck and get the guitar adjusted. So let's finish up this portion before we move on to the next. So as we get closer to finalizing this build, we're getting closer to one critical aspect that we still need to tackle, and that is final adjustment. Now, putting together a guitar is challenging in itself, but even with all the careful attention that we've put into it. If we don't do a final adjustment correctly on the guitar, it's never gonna feel right and it'll never, never really play right either. So in the next video, I'm gonna go through all of that with you. We're gonna be tackling everything from neck relief adjustment, intonation, bridge saddle height, pickup height, all kinds of little things along the way uh, to get this guitar ready and set up for rocking. Now, whether or not you're building your own guitar um, and trying to tackle all of that, or you just want to have a better understanding of what goes into a guitar setup uh, for your regular daily player guitar that you have out there, you'll definitely want to tune in to the follow-up videos. I think they're going to be very informative and uh, of great value to most of you out there. Now, if you've been following on this build all along, I want to thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate all of the questions. You guys do have some really good questions that uh, you ask in the comment section below. Always appreciate those. Some of you have even offered some helpful tips, which I always feel helpful and appreciate as well, not just for me, but also for all of the other viewers that are tuning in. So keep those coming. Uh, if you have any specific questions regarding this video, you can ask them below or better yet, why not tune in to the Addicted to Gear live show that happens every Sunday right here on the channel. We talk about everything gear and guitar related, including latest industry trends, news, new products, guitar builds, acquisitions, all kinds of great stuff. You can ask me and you can ask the rest of the guys that tune in regularly there. We're, we're always willing to uh, share helpful information. So don't miss out every Sunday right here on Addicted to Gear. That pretty much wraps up our video for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll be back with more.